too close. The guy needs to breathe back a little up, bit. Back up a little you okay? Bit. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Five minutes. Vanda's great opportunity taking on Gennady Golovkin uh, the Cinco de Mayo. What does it mean to be able to get this uh, great opportunity? It's a, it's a great opportunity for Southern California. You know, a lot of Latinos here. It's a great holiday for that day. And they picked the right guy to put on a good show, uh, Mexican-style fighting, Cinco de Mayo. It's not, it's not no Mexicans in there, but it's going to be, it's going to feel like that. We're used to seeing uh, very fan-friendly fights from you, win, lose, or draw. What can we expect from you this time? Same, come forward fighting. You know, my fights, my, my, my losses, if you look at it, they're two guys that as soon as they taste my power, they start running. And, and Gennady, you know, he has my respect. He comes to fight. I'm going to come to fight. It's going to answer a lot of questions about him and me. And it's going to show where I belong in the sport. You know, I, I always I always get frustrated chasing guys in the ring, and I don't got to chase Golovkin, so it's going to be a fight. He's going to hit me, I'm going to hit him, we're going to bump for sure. What is it that you have that will help you win, and what is it that you see in Gennady that is beatable? The fact that I don't care, I'm going to stand in front of him. I'm not afraid to get hit. And I never really seen somebody stand in front of him and, and take his punches and give some back. As soon as people get hit from him, they try to get on defense and try to move away. Um, we'll see what answers he has when I stand in front of him. He hits me and the guy's not running. He's there and he's hitting him back. Vanda, you're 154 and natural. What do you think going up in weight to 160? Um, you know, all fighters, you know, we're not that weight. We don't walk around at that weight. We're actually heavy. We, we, some of us kill ourselves to make whatever weight we fight on. So, you know, when I got the call, I was, I was in bed. And when they asked me, uh, can you be 176? By, you know, by Friday, I was like, I'm 175 right now, 176 right now. So the weight is not an issue. I think it's a, it's a benefit for me um, because, you know, I get to eat a little bit. You know, you have a little more carne asada and, and, and stuff like that. So, so it, I think it's an advantage for me. I always did good at higher weight class. My sparring partners, you know, they've always been heavier guys. You know, I've always sparred with heavier guys in the gym that fight at middleweight, super middleweight. So I think it's going to be benefit for me to move up. Bonus, is it kind of surreal that you're actually getting this opportunity? It's actually like, you know, I, I really, I was just on my bed every single day, you know, reading about the Canelo thing, Canelo thing, reading about what's going to happen with, you know, the, the Triple G fight. I didn't even think I would get the call. And when I was reading through it, my kids were jumping them. Every day, you know, I get up and I read you guys, whatever you guys have on boxing or whatever about boxing news. And my kids were with me and I was in bed and I got the call you know, Don King, and he was like, uh, hey, man, uh, there's this guy they call uh, Triple G or something like that. You want to fight? I'm like, Don, you know what you're talking about, man. Of course I'll take the fight. Are you serious? He's like, yeah. And then next thing I know, he goes, all right. And then I'll, I was a front runner for the fight, and then I was excited, man. I got up happy, called my trainer, Edmund, and, and told my wife, baby, we got the fight. Nobody even believed it. What's funny is, like, two weeks ago, me and my wife were watching fights, and I never asked her this, and I was like, baby, who's your favorite fighter? And then she was like, I'm like, no, you got to pick one. She goes, you. I was like, no, you got to pick somebody. And then she actually mentioned him. And I was she's like, I actually like, you know, Golovkin's a good guy. I, you know, he's very humble, the way he cares himself. So, you know, I got to kick his ass. Cause, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I got to kick his ass. So wifey. Well, what's the last year been like for you? I remember you, you tweeted out some very uh, controversial things last year over your past management. Then you're kind of in limbo. You signed with Don King. And now you're here. What's the last 12 to 16 months been like for you? Um, as you guys know, the boxing game, it's, it's, it's about who you're with. If you have the right people, no matter who you are, they'll make you into a superstar. Um, there's a lot of great fighters, even right now, that are sitting in their house, that you know they are being benched. They don't get the opportunity to perform because of the people they have in their corner, um, the people holding them back. Um, I had that. I had to do with a lot of boxing politics. You know, As you know, um, you know a little bit about it. Um, but, you know, I'm just happy that Don King took me under his wing and, and, you know, brought me back. He promised me something, and I promised him to give him a good fight. So I'm just happy to be back with Don King, and I'm happy to be on the stage again because being out, you know, every day I've been missing the sport so long, and it's been depressing, you know, because I want to be in the ring, I want to fight, and fights got made and got canceled. I'm just very happy to get the opportunity to fight, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be back. Bonus, final question for me. Do you think Saul Alvarez plays by a different set of rules in boxing? I think so. Uh, the fact that he gets six months and Weed gets nine months, they should say something. You know, Chavez Jr. failed and he gets nine months for smoking weed and, and, Ch and Canelo gets, you know, for steroids six months. You know, it's like, okay, if you have to pick, I'll, you know, choose weed. You know what I mean? Well, your sponsors, because, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 it's a uh, cushy punch. There you go. That's right. <laughs> 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 How do you feel about that? Two years. You bow after Lara fight. 
But I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing really good, man. I mean, I wanted to get back. The reason why I had problems with past management is because the fights got made. I took those fights, you know, I didn't get full camps for those fights, and I took those fights always on short notice. And it was, it was basically I was doing favors for them. Oh, you want to fight this guy on this time? I was taking the time. But for this fight, we were in training. We were supposed to fight two, three weeks ago. You know what I mean? Before I got the call, so we were in camp. We were ready to go. So I'm happy. This is actually the first time that I'm actually in shape and ready to go when I got the call. Bunnis, what makes Armenian fighters so tough? I mean, we say with Artinian, with you, what, what is it about Armenian fighters? I mean, the will. I mean, we're, we're a small group of people, so we always stick together. So we always, uh, we, growing up, you know, from our history, we always have to fight through, you know, a lot. You know, we have to be tough and we have to fight through it. And, and that's, what, that's why we are tough, man. We don't, just don't give up. Just like Mexican fighters, man. We come in there, once we're in the ring, we put on a show. We want to we wanna just make the fans happy. And, and, you know, all my fights, to believe it or not, even when I won, if it didn't end in a knockout, my Armenian fans were not happy. Even if I won, they want to see, like, people going at it. They want to see war. They want to see action. Vanessa, I think a lot of people forget your uh, decorated amateur experience with eight-time national uh, champion, uh, the 2004, representing the U.S. in the Olympics. What do you say to the naysayers that are not giving you a great of a chance for, against Golovkin? I mean, if people do research, me and Golovkin were in the same Olympics, 2004. He fought Andre Durell in that Olympics. You know, we're in the Olympics. I saw him fight in the Olympics, and I saw him when he lost uh, to Russia. So uh, we, we, we've we been together all this time, and, and the reason I think I got the fight is because people know my history. They know that, 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 that I have had experience, 130 amateur fights, U.S. Olympian, 40 professional fights. I mean, all that is gonna is gonna is gonna be advantage of me for this fight. Last question, guys. I know a lot of people are expecting this fight to heavily go Gennady's way, but given what you said, do you feel the fight will be a lot more competitive and go beyond expectations of what people are thinking of? I mean, how many times have you guys, you know, done interviews where you guys ask the guys those questions and then the guy comes and you guys all, you know, I know what you guys are thinking in the back of your heads right now. You go, you're like, you know. He's fighting a giant. He's fighting a killer. All right, we'll see. We'll see on the. We'll see on the fifth. You know, we'll see. It's gonna be a lot. Answer a lot of questions about him because we're gonna bump. It's gonna be train hitting the train. You know what I mean? I want to see what this man has, and I wanna. I want him to just to try test my army and power, and let's see what's up. You know what I mean? I want him to test it.